All right, can I get a quick show of hands? Uh, there's bright light, so I can't really see you, but uh, quick show of hands. How many people here can speak another language? Spanish, French, German, that, that's awesome. That's, there's a lot of hands. Now, what if I say, hola, como estas? Did, uh, did you understand what I said? Eh, uh, bien. Now, uh, how about bonjour, parlez-vous français? Ah, uh, oui. Now, you might not be fluent in that language. In fact, you might not even claim to understand it. But you know some simple words, some basic phrases in that language. Now, the goal of this talk is to help you to explain, uh, or to help explain basic terms that are used by developers so that you can better explain yourself when you're talking to developers. Uh, but also, more importantly, so that you understand what they're saying to you. Now, to do this, uh, before we uh, dive headfirst into uh, terminology and technologies, we're going to briefly discuss the fundamentals, uh, the foundational concepts of how the web works. See, the way that you see a website is a bit different from how a developer views a website. You see something like this. Uh, you recognize that uh, a website's made up of multiple elements uh, on a page. There's text, there's images, there's links. Uh, you know that some of the elements uh, are on every page and some elements change uh, depending on the page. You know that some elements are dynamic. Uh, you have things like sliders or gallery views. Now, a developer understands all of this as well, but they look a little bit deeper when they see a site. This is how a developer sees a site. See, they're, they're looking through it. They're, they don't just look at the content, but they look at how the content changes, uh, where it's stored on the server, how it's being delivered to the web browser, all the different steps in between. And when a developer is pulling a site apart, they usually divide the site into two parts, uh, two pieces, the front end and the back end. Now, these are confusing terms because they tend to be a bit overloaded. See, when you hear front end and back end, you might be thinking about this, how the front end is the part of your site that your users see, and the back end is the part of the site, the WordPress admin, that, that you see, that you have access to, to to control the content and make changes. That's not usually what a developer is talking about. See, from a developer's perspective, all of that counts as the front end of the website. The back end is the realm of the server. It's the hardware and the software that's used to build and serve both the user-facing side and uh, the admin, the WordPress admin side of your website, and then deliver it to your browser. The specifics of what falls on what side of the line can be a bit fuzzy, but this is the division we're going to be using through the rest of the talk. So let's get started with the front end, starting with HTML. HTML is the file format of the web. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And it all comes back to HTML. No matter what you use to build your site, uh, whether you use WordPress or Drupal or Squarespace or something else, it all ends up as HTML. Another term, getting ahead of myself there, another term that uh, is often used in conjunction with HTML is CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's what determines how a page looks. Layout, color, typography, all of that is controlled in CSS. Then we have JavaScript, which is commonly abbreviated JS. JavaScript is a programming language that lets you make changes to an HTML page dynamically. That's really all that JavaScript does. It makes changes to the HTML page that it's connected to. A common place that you'll see JavaScript is in things like sliders or carousels. Uh, another one would be drop-down navigation, fly-out navigation, different interactive elements like that. Then we have WordPress themes. Now, you've probably heard WordPress themes uh, described as being the way that you control or change the look and feel of your site. That's absolutely true. But now that you know about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can understand that the way WordPress themes work is by bundling those things together in an easy-to-install way. But there's a critical fourth piece to WordPress themes, something called PHP. And we'll talk about it a bit more later, I promise. But for now, let's just say that PHP is something you add to the HTML of your page so that you can pull in content from WordPress. 
And since, remember, we're talking about both the user-facing side and the WordPress uh, admin side, when we say the front end of your site, uh, it makes sense to take a moment and talk about plugins here, too. But admittedly, this is where the line starts to blur a little bit. Because WordPress plugins add features and functionality to your site. And to do this, they tap into things that fall under the back end part of your site. They're written in PHP, they connect to your database, they install files uh, on your server. So let's just move ahead and start talking about the back end of your site. And when we're talking about the back end of a website, you have to start with servers. This is another term with some problems because the word server can be applied to two very different things. Server could be used to describe the hardware that's running your site. Something that kind of looks like this. Uh, it's got blinking lights. Now, uh, when we're talking about server hardware, we have to stop, take a moment, and talk about hosting. Hosting can also be confusing as a term. Hosting refers to the service plan you have for the hardware that your website lives on. You can kind of think about hosting like renting a place to live. Your host is where your site lives. And just like there's different kinds of places to live, there's different kinds of hosts. One of the cheapest and most common types of hosting is something called shared hosting. You can sort of uh, envision it working like this. You have multiple sites all running uh, on the same physical hardware. If we were to continue with the analogy of renting a place to live, then you could think of uh, shared hosting as kind of like renting a spot in a hostel. Now, another common type of uh, hosting is something called a VPS. VPS stands for Virtual Private Server. This works differently than a shared host. With a VPS, each customer gets their own dedicated server to run their site. If we were, uh, again, continuing the analogy of a place to live, hosting on a VPS is kind of like renting an apartment in an apartment building. You've got a little bit more structure and separation from your neighbors. Now, you might be wondering what the deal is with the dotted line that's running around the, those VPSs there. It kind of looks suspiciously like the server on the other side. The reason is this, that while for all intents and purposes, VPSs behave like their own private individual servers, they're technically all running on the same physical machine thanks to something called hardware virtualization. We really don't have time to go into uh, the intricacies of hardware virtualization. It's very cool. Uh, if you're curious, there's some, some great articles out there uh, on the subject. Now, the reason that all of this is important is that uh, there's fundamental differences between shared hosts and VPSs. And understanding these differences uh, is important because they can affect the security and stability of your site. See, if something bad happens on one of the uh, other sites on your shared host, it could potentially affect the entire machine and therefore your site as well. This sort of thing doesn't really happen with VPSs. See, understanding this difference is so important because uh, depending on which kind of host you have, you'll have different options at your disposal when solving problems. Now, there is another kind of host that we should mention, managed hosting. With managed hosting, someone else takes care of all of this for you. And uh, they are the ones who worry about whether you're on a shared host, a VPS, what your backup and staging strategies are, all of that stuff. Um, for a lot of WordPress admins, managed hosting is a great option. And there's several great choices uh, for WordPress hosts out there. In fact, most of them have booths in the hall. Now that we've covered uh, the hardware side of servers, uh, we're going to talk about the software side, because the term server is also used to describe the software that runs on your server hardware and serves your website to visitors. Kind of works like this. The most common type of server software in the WordPress world is Apache. And while there are others that work with WordPress, Apache is still the most common. Now, if we back up a moment and talk about this little interaction here, uh, how, how does this work exactly? How does your computer know which server to connect to? Uh, when it's trying to request a website. Well, that's all thanks to domain names. You're probably already familiar with domain names, but we're going to take a, a real quick moment here and talk about uh, behind the scenes of domain names. And to do that, we have to start by talking about IP addresses. An IP address is a numerical identifier corresponding to a computer on the internet. 
Every server that connects to the internet gets an IP address. It's how servers differentiate themselves. And while computers are pretty great with remembering numbers, uh, we humans kind of suck at it. <laughs> so that's why we invented domain names, because they're easier to remember. And domain names and IP addresses are tied together with something called DNS. Now, we can explain the way DNS works by likening an IP address to a phone number. This phone number here corresponds to me. It doesn't actually. That's not my real number. Don't call it. It won't work. And in a similar way, that fictional IP address <laughs> corresponds to my website. But if you think about it, that's not actually how phone numbers work. Phone numbers don't correspond to people, they correspond to phones. If I gave my phone to someone else and you tried to reach me, you wouldn't. You'd reach them, the person who has my phone. And so in a similar way, IP addresses don't actually correspond to websites. They correspond to servers. If you move to a different host or a different server, you get a different IP address. Uh, and if you want your domain name to still point to your website, you need to change your DNS settings to point that domain name to your new IP address on your new server. So you can kind of think of DNS as operating like a giant phone book. I did promise we'd talk about PHP uh, eventually. It stands for PHP Hypertext Processing. Um, it's a language which runs on your server. WordPress is written in PHP. WordPress plugins and themes are also written in PHP. And the most common thing to do with PHP is to use it to connect to databases. Why? Well, all of your content lives in databases. All your posts and pages, all your categories and tags, everything, it's in your database. You can kind of think of it uh, as a, a virtual filing cabinet where all of the stuff from your site lives. And when we're talking about uh, databases and WordPress, the most popular database software is MySQL. Uh, when people are talking about MySQL, they often are also talking about something called PHP MyAdmin. It's a database administration tool. Why would you need this? Well, because if you want to administer your database, it's going to look something like this. This is the MySQL uh, command line interface, and it's scary looking. <laughs> On the other hand, this is what PHP MyAdmin looks like. And while admittedly it is certainly complex and has a lot of different options and functionality, it's easier to use than the command line. Finally, we come to the term stack. Stack is used to describe the combination of software that makes your website work. And for WordPress, it's almost always a LAMP stack. Linux, the underlying operating system, with Apache, MySQL, and PHP. You'll also hear of things like a MAMP stack or a WAMP stack. And in addition to being fun to say, they're usually used uh, for developing your WordPress website locally. And there you go. That was really fast. Um, I hope that uh, you picked up a few things. Um, but more importantly, as I said at the outset, this isn't to make you fluent in understanding developer, but hopefully it gives you a foundation that you can build on in the future to understand more of these concepts. Um, that's me. I, that's my Twitter handle. I'm a freelance uh, designer and developer. And slides and more are all at that bit.ly link. Thank you.